Hi, Tom Andreas here, and I want to go over some of the really cool things about uh, vCarve Pro. And uh, to start with, we're going to go ahead and just create a new file. And when you create a new file, you can see that the first thing that you have to do is to set the size of the workpiece. And so I'm going to go ahead and set it at 16 inches by 16 inches. And when we get down here to material uh, thickness, you can see that it says the Z0. Do you want the Z0 on the top of the piece or on the bottom of the piece? And we always want that set on the top of the piece so that we can have our X, Y, and Z in the center of our workpiece. Our material thickness in the shop is almost always 0.75 or 3 quarters of an inch. We also want our XY origin to be in the center. If you take a look at this workpiece, you can see that there's a crosshair, kind of like when you look through a gun scope. And what that does is it tells you where the X coordinate is and where the Y coordinate is and where the 0, 0 on X and Y is. Now, the Z0 is up here at uh, the thickness of the material. So Z means how deep does it cut. So some of the other uh, things that sometimes get uh, people in trouble is if they have this XYZ coordinate zero point uh, set in another location, often uh, people will click this location, which will, as you can see up here, sets the zero 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 point in the upper left hand corner or down here in the lower left hand corner you can probably see those gray lines or the lower right or the upper right okay but we again just always want to see that crosshair hit dead center as if we're aiming at the center of that piece of wood we do not want to use any x or x or y origin offset and no data scaling we also want it to be in inches because that's what we use in the shop so I'm going to click OK and I'll just walk you around the screen a little bit. On this side of the screen are all of the different tools and the functionality for file saving and viewing and everything uh, that we're going to use. Over here you've got two tabs. Now um, I can demonstrate this tab. This is actually the graphics tab and then this is what it will look like when we carve it in wood and so I'll come back to that one. And then once we get everything done then we can come over here to our tool paths and this is kind of the output side. So if you think about this in terms of workflow, we start here on the left and we move across the screen to the right over here and finally end up on tool path just like you read. And so that works pretty well. So we've got, uh, the first thing I would tell you is that um, uh, on file new, if you want to start a new file, there's that. There it is. To open something you're working on, there it is. And this kind of cracks me up because this particular icon is in the old three and a half inch disk. And uh, so here's some import vectors from another file. And to import a bitmap for tracing, we'll get into that. That's great fun. And then if we want to set the job dimensions and the origin, again, that was the tab that we started on. Or if you want to cut or to copy or to paste or to undo or redo. Anything that you hover over will show you the quick tips. And so if we want to manipulate the screen, uh, what we do is uh, wherever our, we hover and if we roll the mouse wheel, if we roll the mouse wheel in, wherever we hover is exactly where we'll be able to view. And so now I'm going to hover and view to, the, to this point and I will then zoom into this point and then if I want to move it left or right, I can click it anywhere, click and hold the left, or excuse me, click and hold the uh, mouse wheel and position it anywhere I want. Now, it doesn't matter where you click it at that point. Um, anytime you depress the wheel, you can move it. But remember that zooming in and out, if I want this quadrant, I can hold it in the center and roll forward. If I want this quadrant, it's the same type of thing. So I'll recenter it so that we can work on it. So then the next thing is if we wanted to zoom, we would just zoom to uh, this a particular location. And as we continue to click it, we'll zoom in tighter and tighter. So one click, two clicks. So that's how that works. I actually tend to roll the mouse wheel. And then on this one, zoom to fit. If we were to zoom a particular area, then it would zoom to that area or maybe this area here, which is to make it even smaller. So that's kind of neat. Let's say we wanted to zoom all that to fit. Boom, there it is.
Okay, so that's kind of how uh, that particular one of the things thing that uh, all all of our um, carvings do have is a profile around the edge, and so when when we use a profile, it cuts into the edge of the wood, and so um, what we need to do is to make sure that we're not using part of the area that's going to be part of that profile. And so if I click on that margin, you can see that it gives me a value, and I want to set most of the time I want to set uh, a a ruler bar here so that I don't draw any graphics that are going to be in the area where we're going to have a profile. And so you can see, if you look right here, that this would be the zero. Obviously, that's the zero, zero, zero point in the XYZ coordinate system. And so then, and remember, this is a 16 by 16 board. So we're actually going to use seven inches from the zero, 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 which would be a 14 inch by 14 inch carve area. So those ruler bars can be extremely handy. And we also can, they're, they're referred to as guides in VCarve, but um, these guides can be used to align text or whatever it is that you want to do. And so uh, simply click on that ruler bar and pull out as many different guides as you like. They're extremely handy for aligning graphics. So once we get that done, we want us to go over here and start with the basic uh, vectors. Now, when I use the term vector, that means a, an either a line or a curve. And so in this case, we are going to do a, a circle that is, uh, has a radius of 5.134 inches so but we're actually going to set that at 14 inches or excuse me seven inches on the radius and uh, so I'm going to create that um, in the zero zero point and boom now you can see that it is a 14 inch diameter circle now you don't have to do it uh, quite that accurately if you don't want to you can actually create circles by dragging them out anywhere that you want them and so this can actually be quite handy uh, in either case. You can freehand them uh, or you can put them in with perfect accuracy. So I'm going to close that and I'm going to select this circle and I'm going to hit the delete key, delete and delete. And so the next thing we want to do is to go ahead and create some type of a border circle. So I'm going to click on it and I'm just going to kind of rough it in and close it. And so if I click on this circle, I click off of it to deselect it and on it to select it. If I make a second click, you can see that a lot of resizing handles show up and rotational handles show up. And then also we want to check to make sure that this circle is dead center in the crosshair. And you can see I'm rolling it in and rolling it out. Okay, so let's say that we want to have a circle something like that. And then maybe we want to move over to this ellipse tool and we'll do something like this and then I'll close. And so now that I have an ellipse, I can click on it to select and do a control C and then a control V. And now I've got a second oval, maybe a control C and a control V again. And now I've got a third oval and then another control V because it's already copied and a fourth oval. And so you can see how that's very powerful in terms of working with graphics. So I want to delete all of that right now and show you another tool that's very useful, which is the rectangle tool. And once again, I can freehand that rectangle and pop it right in there. It's currently selected. And I have something really neat to show you. This would be if we wanted to soften the edges of maybe a border that would go around some sort of graphic. And so if I want to soften that edge maybe at one inch, I'm going to apply it. And you can see then I've softened this edge right here. Okay, so now let's say that we want to put an internal border uh, around this. And so we're going to create a vector that is inside of it. And we're going to create it at at a quarter of an inch in and so what I want to do is come in here with another guideline and that's at 7 and this is at 6.5 so that would make it a half of an inch but I want to actually do about two tenths of an inch and so if this is 7 then we want to be at 6.8 
And so if I come up here, I'm going to be at 6.8. You'll see what I'm doing in just a moment. And I'll set this one at 6.8. And I'll come in here and set another one at 6.8. So that's going to be extremely useful and because it's going to guide uh, the the construction we're going to of apply this border, this, uh, border and we're going to use radius internal and we're going to set that at one inch again and I'm going to go in, ahead and apply this just simply by clicking and dragging using the uh, guidelines and I'm not sure why it uh, kicks that off but anyway I'll reset well I will reset that internal radius to one and hit apply and so I've got my two um, my two vectors that are going to be used to carve and so at this point what I'm going to do is show you exactly how to carve it and how this is going to look so the first thing that we have to do is to select and I want to go over selection just for a moment if we if we drag a rubber band box or a selection box around it I'm going to hit escape here uh, to deselect okay, what it. I want to go over now is how to select using windows and I'm going to zoom into this area so you can see it if I want to select anything in windows if I pull from right to left in windows anything that's inside of the box is going to be selected and so you can see that the full vector all the way around uh, the plaque is selected and to deselect it I simply click off of it but then if I pull from left to right you can see that it's not selected and so if I want to select something in Windows I have to go ahead and pull the rubber band box if I'm going from left to right all the way around and have the entire vector encompassed in the rubber band box and so I'll release it and you can see that it is selected now there's one other way to select in Windows and that is to simply pick it by clicking on it and so if I hold that down and then the shift key the shift key means plus in Windows so that means this and that or this plus this so and to click off again let me demonstrate that one more time so if I hold the shift key down as I select this one now shift and select the second now I'm saying hey computer do you see these two entities and these two entities are vectors and it says yes it responds by painting them magenta and so at this point what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how to carve and so I'm going to use my tool path create V carve engraving tool path and the first thing I'm going to do is to leave my start depth at zero remember that the computer is going to start right here in the center of this crosshair and the surface of it is set at zero and so we want to be zero in the Y and zero in the X and zero uh, in the Z and so that's where that's going to be the flat depth means how far deep uh, and how far or how far down does the the bit the bit actually carve and we're going to carve at point two and uh, usually I carve at point two because that's the past depth it won't cut deeper than point two and if I want to get something uh, in one pass without making a second pass on a carving I just set the maximum depth at point two okay so now we're going we can select a bit type I like a 60 degree 0.25 inch carving bit um, it just seems to work nicely even if it's an irregular surface and so I like that one so I'll just click OK and then at that point uh, you can just click calculate okay and so what we have now is a different look and so the blue is where the tip of the bit will penetrate and track and when it's cutting in the wood and the red is where the bit will actually move so you can kinda of see how this is gonna work and so what I'll do is go ahead and make the carve I'll preview the tool path at this point and I have a lot of really uh, kind of cool functionality here I can set a global fill which now sets it a yellow which might be the color that I paint the board or and then I can also pick a lot of different types of wood like that looks a little bit like maybe a, a walnut or something like that so it helps me kind of understand what's going on so I'm going to close at this point and so now you can see that when you look at the 3d view you can see what the wood is actually going to look like if you go to the vector view 
you can see what is actually happening. So when the computer talks to the CNC carving machine, basically what the vectors do is if your tool bit is out here, it comes and it runs into a vector, runs into a vector right here, big drops the bit, starts to carve, and uh, it carves out the area between the vectors. It runs into another vector and it picks up the bit and stops carving. So if we flip back, you can see that when we come into this area right here, that it's not going to carve. It hits a vector, drops the bit, starts to carve, and then pulls the bit back out. So that's how the vector system actually okay, works. Okay, so one more tip uh, that you should know about. To manipulate the graphic when you're in the 3D view, it's not the same set of buttons. You have to press the left and the right mouse button in order to move the graphic, whereas in the new, in the new view, which is actually uh, the vector view, um, you can you can press the mouse wheel down, so it's just a different a different way of handling it. If you want to uh, look at this in 3D, um, what you have to do is to press the left mouse button down, and if you press the left mouse button down, you can twiddle it, and twiddling means to rotate in three dimensions, and so you can spin it around by grabbing uh, this and orbiting. Uh, in any direction that you want to, you'll kind of get the hang of it. So left mouse bus, uh, button to twiddle, left and right mouse button uh, to move the thing in the plane uh, directly in front of you. Hey, that's the end of the video one. Please continue to video two.